TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel's defense establishment maintained its operational pressure against terror, apprehending over 115 terror operatives since Christmas alone. IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi highlights Israel's preparedness to target Iran's nuclear weapons program. Britain warns that Russia intends to equip Iran with advanced military components that would threaten the security of the Middle East in particular and the world at large. Israel maintains unrelenting operational pressure against terror cells throughout the West Bank districts of Judea, Samaria, and the Jordan Valley. As part of Operation Wavesbreaker, which was launched approximately 10 months ago, IDF, ISA, Shin Bet, and Border Police Special Operations Units persist with nightly counter-terrorism activities yielding extensive results in preventing an uncontrolled surge of nationalistically motivated attacks against Israeli civilians and troops. As such, since Christmas Day, December 25th, 118 terror operatives were apprehended in intelligence-driven operations. And according to IDF Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi, over the course of 2022, as a consequence of Operation Wavesbreaker, no less than 400 terror attacks were successfully prevented. I can't really not to a great effort to the forces that work there. They do a very good job. It's impossible to not to the היא שלא פחות מ-400 פיגועים. לא פחות מ-400 פיגועים, אני הולך לאנדרסטייטמנט, לא פחות מ-400 פיגועים אה, נמנעו במהלך השנה האחרונה כתוצאה מהפעילות הזאת. It is important to highlight that according to senior Israeli security officials, Operations Wavesbreaker has directly contributed to foiling malign efforts by the Muslim Brotherhood via its offshoot Hamas, and the Islamic Republic of Iran by means of its proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad to execute their evil intentions throughout Judea, Samaria, Israel at large, and Jerusalem in particular. Moreover, Israel's defense establishment believes that Israel's state of security and deterrence vis-a-vis -vis its enemies is at its best level to date, despite voices threatened by terror leaders which are regarded as hollow of substance. Returning to General Kochavi's last address to the Institute of National Security Studies, in which he briefly summarized the years in which he commanded the Israel Defense Forces, Israel's top officer asserted that the IDF raised its level of preparedness to unprecedented levels in preparation for the wars of the present and the future. The IDF Chief of General Staff went on to highlight the Islamic Republic of Iran and Israel's northern sector as the greatest and most immediate challenge to the Jewish state. I say Iran and the Southern Sea, because it is not possible, in the instinct that we have built for 20 years, to talk about Iran Gareen. Iran is true. Iran is a big part of the Gareen. We have to see at Iran in a full area, which is broken, of course, from the geography of the country, which is called Iran. בראש ובראשונה זה האיום הפוטנציאלי של יכולת גרעינית צבאית, אבל לצד העניין הזה יש עוד שני דברים משמעותיים, חוץ מאשר יצוא המהפכה עם המושג המופשט הזה קצת. הדבר השני הוא כל פעילות הפרוקסי, כל פעילות השליחים, כל פעילות הצבאות שהאיראנים מנסים לייצר ברחבי המזרח התיכון, לא רק מזרח תיכון, גם אפריקה וגם מקומות אחרים. והדבר החשוב ביותר לענייננו הוא כמובן ההתבססות לא רק דרך צבאות פרוקסי, אלא דרך אמל"ח, דרך תשתיות שהאיראנים מנסים לבסס באזור הקרוב לנו ובראשם במרחב הסורי-לבנוני. 
General Kojave also seized the opportunity to highlight that while Iran's efforts are robust, the IDF has significantly ratcheted up its operational activity against the Islamic Republic of Iran within context of the so-called campaign between the wars, which saw the Israeli security establishment and military in particular foil Tehran's aspirations throughout the region. או מעת לעת הלבנונית, לא, זה לא המצב. היא חובקת את כל המזרח התיכון בעוצמות שונות, והיא בעיקר מערכה שהוגברה מאוד מאוד בשנים האחרונות, שיצאנו לדרך ב-2013, שלוש פעולות בשנה. ב-2014, אם אני זוכר נכון, הייתי ראש אמן, היינו בשש-שבע פעולות בשנה. אנחנו היום בהיקף פעילות של כל סוגי הפעולות, של יותר מכל... תקופה אחרת, הממוצע הוא כל שבוע פעילות כזאת או אחרת. והפעילויות האלה הם אלה שהצליחו להביא את התוצאה ואת המציאות הביטחונית שעליה אנחנו מדברים. General Kohavi went on to highlight the dangers to the world at large and the Middle East in particular if the Ayatollah regime in Tehran manages to acquire nuclear weapons capabilities regardless of whether it intends to use a nuclear bomb or not. And while there are those in Israel's military establishment who regarded a diplomatic solution to Iran's nuclear ambitions as the best way forward, General Kohavi highlighted that the 2015 nuclear agreement, JCPOA, granted Iran a window of opportunity to break out as early as 2031. <laughs> שהחל מ-2031, נכון שזה נראה לנו רחוק, במונחים של אסטרטגיה זה דקה. החל מ-2031, היכולת של איראן הייתה, אם זה היה קורה, לפרוץ ליכולות גרעיניות צבאיות, הייתה גבוהה ביותר. זה בדוק, זה מוכח, זה חד משמעי. ואני מקווה שאנחנו לא מסתמכים על כוונות. את זה ההיסטוריה הוכיחה פעם אחר פעם, שאל תבנה על כוונות הצד השני. ולכן... מדינת ישראל חייבת להיות עם יכולת עצמאית, משמעותית, לפגיעה בפרויקט הגרעין הצבאי האיראני. In response to an extensive list of self-proclaimed experts and knowledgeable analysts who voiced time and again skepticism of Israel's ability to act alone against Iran's nuclear infrastructure, General Kohavi highlighted that Israel has attained the capacity to act against the Islamic Republic alone. צה"ל יהיה מוכן ביום פקודה נגד פרויקט הגרעין ויעמוד במשימות שהוטלו עליו. It is important to note that Israel is recognizing growing international solidarity in recognizing the threats emanating from Iran, a change of policy that emerged since the Islamic Republic began exporting offensive weaponry to Russia for its war in Ukraine, coupled with the Ayatollah regime's oppressive activities against Iranian civilians. Am Wochenende wurden hier erneut zwei Menschen hingerichtet, einfach nur wegen ihrer Teilnahme an Protesten. Ihre Namen waren Muhammad Mehdi Karam und Muhammad Hosseini. Ein Regime, das seine eigene Jugend ermordet, um seine Bevölkerung einzuschüchtern, hat keine Zukunft. In addition to the change of policy in most Western and allied countries, scrutiny of Iranian malign activities has been elevated, as well as its enhanced security relations with Russia in particular. Iran has become one of Russia's top military backers. In return for having supplied more than 300 kamikaze drones, Russia now intends to provide Iran with advanced military components, undermining both military, both Middle East and international security. We must expose that deal. It is important to note that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who is known for his hawkish stance vis-à-vis -vis the Islamic Republic of Iran, acknowledged the positive trend in the international community's altering perception related to the Islamic Republic's malign behavior. Nevertheless, in a private video conference addressed to senior leaders of the powerful American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, AIPAC, he acknowledged lingering gaps between Jerusalem and Washington 
and stress the crucial necessity to close ranks vis-à-vis -vis Iran. Moreover, Netanyahu highlighted that he looks forward to discussing this issue with President Biden and his team, while underscoring that there is more of a meeting of the mind today than there has ever been. In response to Netanyahu's remarks, however, U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price stressed that the differences between Jerusalem and Washington remain solely on the tactical level. There's no secret, and Jake alluded to that this morning, that when it comes to how we do that, there may be some tactical differences. There are some tactical differences. Uh, we've made no secret about that. We have a relationship with Israel that uh, is close enough that it allows us to have candid conversations. And when we disagree, we disagree. We tell them what we think. Uh, they certainly uh, don't shy away from telling us what they think. Price further stressed that while the Biden administration continues to aspire for a diplomatic solution to Iran's nuclear ambitions, the Ayatollah regime continues to shun any substantive talks. Nevertheless, the Biden administration remains convinced that diplomacy is not dead. Thank you for joining TV7 Israel News. We would like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Yair Pinto, wishing you an Erev Mevorach, a blessed evening, and God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.